Uh, hey, hey TMAG community. Um, it's been a while since we did an update about ecology studies and I have been here working four days a week, Thursday to Sunday, doing drawings. Um, and as you can see, I have actually already completed some drawings and washed them off the wall. So it's not as strict a structure as extinction studies. Um, and I'm not announcing when I'm going to be washing the drawings or destroying the drawings to um, social media. It's much more relaxed, this project, I guess you could say, but I guess that's more indicative of the fact that this is a project about memory and, um, and personal history, so it's not, not quite as um, regimented as Extinction Studies. Um, I've just finished a drawing here of a mutton bird. Unfortunately, this one is, has been drawn from a photograph of a, a dead mutton bird that has been washed up on um, the beaches in Lord Howe recently. Um, so, in fact, the, the people that I'm collaborating with, Adrift Lab, um, uh, are, they're a collective of scientists from all over the world. They've been doing research into the shearwaters on Lord Howe Island for the last 11 years, and they've just come back from, from their most recent trip to Lord Howe. So this is a drawing based on some of the photographs that I've seen of um, Adrift Lab um, from their most recent research trip to Lord Howe Island. Um, just talking about the mutton birds, I've, I think I said in the original post about ecology studies that they're a really big presence on the island and that's partly to do with their smell, they smell fishy, so there's, there's a fishy kind of smell around all their burrows on Lord Howe Island. It's also about their call, so the, the call is often described as being not that pleasant. I've actually got a little clip on, on YouTube that I'll play a little bit of and um, I, I really like it. I find it a really comforting, beautiful noise. Let's see what you guys think. <laughs> All right, so it's not, um, you know, the, the most traditionally beautiful bird call you've ever heard, admittedly. Um, quite often people describe it as sounding like babies crying, which I, I probably agree with. Um, I think it also sounds like they're saying, pick me, pick me. <laughs> um, so that's, that's the sound, um, well, one of the things about the bird that I have really, really strong memories attached to, because when I was a kid on the island, staying at my grandmother's house with um, my parents and my brother and sister and other members of family, that was the soundtrack every evening as, um, as we would go to bed as kids. Um, and it's, a, it's not a, a gentle, beautiful sound, but um, to me, it, it brings back really warm, um, beautiful memories. So I guess that's one of the things that I feel that bird does to connect me to memories and to um, ancestors and particularly um, relatives that are no longer with us. Um, uh, I guess I'm gonna start washing this particular shearwater off the wall as we're still talking, I suppose. Um, although I, I might sort of recount another memory that I have about the bird just while I'm doing that because um, the, the memories are, are what I'm talking about being lost in this project. So Extinction Studies was speaking more about the loss to biodiversity, um, the loss of that um, species participating in an ecosystem. But this project is talking about the loss, um, talking about other things that we lose when other life forms disappear. So um, the, the memory that I've got that's sort of strongest about the mutton birds is we would go down as a family um, to a place called Ned's Beach on Lord Howe Island. Um, and Ned's Beach is, um, well, it's my favourite beach on Lord Howe, but it sort of looks out um, onto a series of islands called the Admiralties, just off Lord Howe Island. And we would have barbecues there of an evening time. And um, the, the shearwaters would be out to sea, um, just, I guess, fishing, um, gathering their food for, for the chicks to come back in. And they would come in just on twilight. You'd start to see them filling the skies um, just over Ned's Beach. And my brother and sister and I, or cousins, whoever was there, We'd lie down on the, the sand dunes, the grasses sort of around the beach and, and just look up at the sky and let the birds fly over the top of us. And if you've ever seen mutton birds fly, they're not graceful when they're coming into land, 
They're kind of more like kamikaze sort of pirates. Um, and they crash into the bush and make a hell of a lot of noise, like you just heard. <laughs> um, and it was always quite exciting because you were never quite sure if they were going to get you or not. They would zoom in sort of, you know, what felt like 10, 15 centimetres above your face and completely take over the whole beach. And it was also a really fun thing because someone always got pooed on by a bird, which is always when you're a kid. And, you know, quite funny when you're an adult as well. Um, so that was a really really beautiful thing that we would do a beautiful sort of um, family tradition uh, we the one of the last times that I went to Lord Howe I was there with my brother and his family so he now has two two small kids and we did the same thing we lay we had a beach a, a barbecue at Ned's Beach lay on the sand dunes and like waited for the, the sheer waters to come in and I don't know whether it's that thing where we look back with rose-colored glasses and when you're a kid, you imagine everything to be bigger and better than what it actually is. But um, when we were there with my brother's kids, it seemed like there weren't nearly as many birds coming into land. So just anecdotally, we definitely noticed the, the change in population. Um, well, I guess we can kind of start to see what I'm talking about here with washing the drawings off and, and the birds merging into, into family. And that's probably about three weeks worth of work, I guess, that I've just destroyed. <laughs> um, but anyway, we'll move on to the next drawing. And um, next time I'll, I'll have some other, other things to say about shearwaters and about the island and about plastics pollution. Thanks, guys.